and this is in the newsletter. July 6th is Margot Reed. July 13th, Lauren Fisher is going to be talking on light painting. And August 17 is Peter Ewart on um, creative landscape. And I think you'll enjoy each of those talks for working on um, uh, the fall. Um, and hopefully we'll have a real good program. So with that, um, we'll introduce uh, Gabrielle. I'll turn your mic back on, Gabrielle, or you can. Um, and um, Gabrielle, as, as um, many know, is one of our uh, prized young people in the club, balancing out my age um, and a few others like me. And uh, she's been nicely active and her mom has had often shown up with her and we're happy that she volunteered to give this talk on social media and Instagram. And mm -hmm. Gabrielle, um, welcome. Um, thanks for being here tonight. And you can go to um, screen share and, and take over from here. And if everyone can keep their mics muted, that would be good. I'll watch the chat room if you have a question put it into there and I'll get in touch with them. Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Gabrielle Allen. Uh, I have been a photographer for about two and a half years, so pretty recent. I haven't been doing it for that long, but I have been on Instagram for about seven years. So I am an expert in that. Uh, I will be attending Drexel in the fall to study photography as well. Uh, that's me. Uh, here's my website and my Instagram, which I will be talking about tonight. So, social media. This is something that we all use, I would hope. Uh, everybody knows it. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, whatever you use. I'm sure most of you know Facebook as your primary source of social media but most people my age use Instagram as their primary social media. And uh, I was asked to talk about specifically copyright too. I know this is something Vince, you asked me to talk about. Uh, so if there's any questions while I'm going along, feel free to ask. Okay, so when you post something on social media, that site does not have ownership of it, but they can use it. So, and when, uh, in, specifically in the Instagram terms of service, uh, if you read them, which you always should read the terms and conditions, uh, you will see that you grant Instagram, when you agree to the terms and conditions, a, what they, oops, so sorry. Uh, when you agree to the terms and conditions, you grant Instagram a non-exclusive, royalty-free, transferable, sub-licensable, worldwide license to host, use, distribute, modify, run, copy, publicly perform, or display, translate, and create cre creative derivative works of your content. So I know all of that sounds very scary, but it really isn't. Instagram has very little interest in your content. And as you know, when you have copyright over something, you have the, uh, you have the ownership of it. And you are the only one that can copy, reproduce, print, share that work. So, but when you share something within a app, if somebody else were to for instance, in Instagram, you can share posts and send them to other people. That does not count as copying your work as it is still protected by Instagram's terms of service within the app. And, but if someone were to screenshot your work and send it to somebody else or repost it on their website, that would be a copyright violation. And there are ways to report that in most apps. These, I'm talking about specifically Instagram here, but this does go for Facebook and Twitter and stuff like that as well. 
And as always, please, please read the terms and conditions if this is something you're worried about. If you don't have the time for that, just Google it too. It's very simple. So talking about Instagram specifically, it is made for sharing photos. So I personally think it is the best application for photographers to share their work. It is visual first. You cannot post just text in the app. You have to share a photo when you post. It makes it like great for, you know, creating an image as well. It is the sixth most popular social media site. Uh, Facebook being the number one most popular. Uh, so, and it has over 1 billion monthly active users. That is people using the app within a month. Now, 72% of all teenagers use Instagram. And this is most teenagers' first social media app as well. So it's going to be what they stick with and what they continue to use over time. So if you get on Instagram now, it will continue to grow and more people will be using it. And 73% of teenagers think that it is the best way for a new brand or business to reach them. Now you might not necessarily be a brand or business, but it is still the best way to reach an audience, I believe. Now, when you set up an Instagram account, speaking of like, are you a brand, a business, personal, there are a bunch of different ways to use the app. You can just use it to talk with your friends, share personally, or you can run it as a business. So there's three different types of accounts that you can have. You can have a personal account, a creator account, or a business account. So a personal account can be either public or private. It has all the basic features that you'd expect to have. And you can, you can link a Facebook page to your Instagram as well. Now the next step up from that is a creator account. This is what I personally have. It allows you to get insights and analytics into your posts. So you can see how many people have viewed them, how many people have clicked onto your page. You can see if they've discovered your post from hashtags or if it's from their feed. You can see yeah, how they're reaching you. You can see um, it lets you also choose the category of creator that you are. So you can choose to display a little label in your bio that will say photographer or painter or whatever you are. And, uh, but you, you cannot set a creator account to private either. Now, a business account is the next step up from the creator account. You get even more different um, insights and analytics. You get, uh, you can display uh, contact details as well in a business account. And you can choose a category for your business. You also get in, uh, access to the Instagram shopping feature, so where you can tag products in a post if you were selling prints or something. And you can uh, then manage uh, promotions as well. You can pay money to promote your post into other people's feeds. Excuse me, Gabrielle, a question, mm -hmm. um, two questions. One, do you have both personal and creator and is there a cost involved in the creator or the, and or the business? And mm -hmm. also, can you reshow your Instagram address? Uh, I will reshow my Instagram handle at the end. How okay. about that? So everybody can do that. Right. There is uh, no cost involved in either the creator or business account. And with Instagram, you can set up multiple accounts as long as you have a different email for each account. So I personally have a personal account that I use to share like family pictures and stuff. And then I have my separate photography account that is set up just under a different email. 
and Instagram has an in-app function that lets you easily switch in between accounts. Did that cover everything? Yes, how about cost for the accounts? There is no cost. The only cost would be if you have a business account, you could pay to promote your post as basically ads. Okay, thank you. So we're going to talk about now the best time to post. This is one of the most crucial things about Instagram is that it is reliant on consistency. You have to keep up with the algorithm, otherwise your post will disappear. Ever since Instagram switched from doing chronological feed to its um, algorithm feed, if you don't post consistently, your posts will get buried and people will not see them, even if they are following you. So this is a kind of crazy thing, but Thursday between 2 and 3 p.m. is the best time to post on Instagram. Pretty much any day of the week between 2 and 3 p.m. is going to be what you want to do. The weekends are not good. And if you post on a schedule as well, keep up with it. If you post once a week, twice a week, even like once a month or something, be consistent with it. Keep going. We're going to uh, talk now about hashtags. This is how people are going to find your posts on Instagram, most likely. You, Instagram has, I think, the best system for hashtags out of any social media site. Because when you, each hashtag has its own page, as you can see here. This is a screenshot of the page when you click on hashtag photography. And you can follow different hashtags as well. And then each day you will see the top posts of that day. And when you're using your hashtags, make sure they're relevant to your post, but also make sure that you are using a lot of them. And don't use also very broad hashtags and very narrow hashtags. So use hashtag photographer, hashtag photography, and then narrow it down a little. Be nature photography, landscape, whatever your post is. If it's macro, do that and then narrow it down even more. If it's nature photography, if it's a flower, maybe put flower photography, the type of flower, if it's a certain season or certain location to add that. If there's a specific city that you were in when you took this photo, if there's a, uh, yeah. And uh, make sure to keep your hashtags out of your caption as well. Uh, when you, one of my biggest pet peeves is when people will use a word as a hashtag in a sentence where they'll just be typing normally and then all of a sudden one of the words is replaced with a hashtag. I personally find it very hard to read, it's very distracting, and it's just not a good look. So I would recommend putting some space in between what your caption is and where your hashtags are and where they start. Because honestly, most people will not read the hashtags either. People don't really care about what you're tagging your post as. So keep that in mind as well. Now when people, so you've used your hashtags, now people are clicking onto your account. People are coming to you. The I mean, uh, important thing is the look of your account. Instagram is a very vain website. People care a lot about looks. So make sure that when people first click on your page, they, they immediately know your name, what you do, like uh, specifics of what you do, if there's a way that you want people to be able to get in contact with you, your website, keep that all like in your bio. Keep that upfront and make it obvious. 
have your full name if you feel comfortable doing that and make sure that you put photographer if this is your photography account so people know your photographer if you're specifically a landscape photographer too put that in there and uh, decide how personal and how professional you want it to be if this is a personal thing and you're also going to be sharing pictures of your family and vacations as long along with your work like keep that in mind if this is a account that you're running as a business too uh, as you you want people to hire you to do work for them keep a professional look about it make sure the captions on your photos explain your photos this is one of the most ignoring things is when you click on a really interesting photo you're like what is this where was this taken and then the caption is something completely unrelated and then you don't know where it was taken why what season so keep that all in your captions make sure you say location season if the photo was taken a while ago if there's special equipment you use to uh, say that all in your caption and then also know this is probably the most important thing I can say know why you are using Instagram know why you've decided to branch out and why you are sharing your photos are you trying to just share them with family and friends are you trying to grow an audience are you trying to grow a business keep your intent in mind and now we're going to take a look at some accounts uh, with a specific look because when people click on your account they're going to see a grid of all of your photos so if you have a bunch of black and white photos and then one that is bright red that is going to be an eyesore so you can do as the uh, account on the left is doing you can put white borders around your photos too that's something you can do to keep it separate give it a nice look and uh, you when you're looking at these you can instantly tell what these photographers are doing you can see the person on the left does a lot of abstract stuff they do silhouette work you can see there's some nature involved and you can start to understand what they're doing you can see the photographer on the right does a lot of portrait stuff a more kind of photojournalism like and Excuse here's me, yes um, uh, if we can just pause for a minute to uh, pick up a couple questions mm -hmm. um, the captions that you talk about um, should they be of a particular length uh, not particularly but Instagram will collapse the captions if it's more than after the first two lines of it. So keep your important information or your eye grabber up front too. And uh, you, will yeah. you show us some of those captions at some point? I don't have any examples of that here. Okay. But if you, uh, at the end, I think uh, you can go to my Instagram account and see what I do for my captions. Maybe we can do that at the end. Um, mm -hmm. And the um, hashtags, how do you keep track of all, manage all of your hashtags? Do you group them together? Do you have text files that you pop in? Or how do you physically manage all that? I personally just start typing and then seeing what comes up because Instagram will recommend you hashtags as well, uh, like autofill them. And then I, if I have uh, similar posts, I will just copy and paste the hashtags from one post to another. So if I have two posts that are both uh, landscapes that were both taken in Iceland, I will just maybe change one or two hashtags if it doesn't fit the other post and just copy and paste. Okay, so you can store your hashtag somewhere on your Instagram account to pop in on your photos I don't think there's a way specifically that you can store them I just uh, if you wanted to you could probably open up a separate document or something and copy and paste I 
personally don't do that, but just figure out whatever works for you. Okay. As far as the postings, uh, is Facebook similar? Do you know? I don't have information on that. No. And since you said Thursdays at two o'clock, mm -hmm. um, can you prospectively schedule a posting to go up, to go live? Uh, not in Instagram, but I believe there are other third party applications that would let you do things like that. I personally don't know of the names of any. I don't use them, but uh, you could probably. Okay. And this white border that you're showing, uh, mm -hmm. a couple questions. Could you explain how to do that? It's not widely known. I personally, I actually do not do this, so I do not know how it is done. Okay. I'm, yeah. And um, where are you getting your images from? Are you doing them straight from your phone or are you get, bringing them in from your computer? Uh, they are from my phone. You can only post to Instagram with the app on your phone. You cannot post from uh, a desktop site. So you would move your images from your desktop to your phone if they were not shot on your phone? Uh, yes. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll pick up the other questions next time. Go ahead. Thank you. Okay. Uh, these are two more accounts that I think have a very good look to them. The account on the left, especially, this is one of my favorite accounts to look at. This is Jason Varney. He is the premier food photographer in Philadelphia. So he does pretty much all of the magazine work that you will see in food magazines in Philadelphia. He, I got to work with him once at a workshop. He is incredible. And when he posts, he can see he uses very, he groups his warm colors together. He, you know, he keeps it uniform, but not identical. And then the account on the right as well. You can see there's a lot of similar colors and shapes. And there's a, if you notice, there's a little white symbol in the corner I send the post. That means that there are multiple pictures in that post. So when you are posting on Instagram, keep in mind what photo you put in front, because that is going to be what is visible in your feed and what it's gonna show up when somebody sees it in a hashtag or something. So keep your most eye-catching photo in the front as well. Okay. Are there any more questions? Uh, yes, there are a couple. Um, Lauren says that there's an app called Flume, F-L-U-M-E, it's in the chat room, that you can take images from your Mac or PC and put into the computer um, and um, Jeff indicates that there are some apps that make the formatting um, a little quicker uh, mm -hmm. to use. Um, yeah, they, actually, yeah, actually, Vince, what they allow, I think one's called like Insta Square or No Crop, and they allow you to make more squares or put borders and some things like that around. Because sometimes you have a portrait and if you just stuck it in Instagram, there goes half the person's head. But if you still wanted the sides, you can kind of, those apps kind of make it quick and easy, I think. But, you have a name for that one, Jeff? Uh, I'll look it up. Yeah, we can put it in the chat. That yeah. Um, Gabriel, there's a question about changing your username. Once you have one, can you do that? Uh, yes, you can. I'm pretty sure. I'm like 90% certain. And do you need a space between the hashtags if you're using multiple hashtags? Uh, yes, you will, because otherwise it'll start to, I think they'll join together. Um, Pat tells us that you can bring images down from your Google Cloud into your um, phone and post that way. And um, Ivan posts from his iPad. Uh, yes, you can. Uh, when you post on Instagram, it's going to open up your whatever your photos application is. 
So as long as you have your photos in there, you should be able to access them. Okay. Um, a comment, apparently uh, you don't always use squares on your account. Is, it, is there yes. a benefit to squares or should you always be the same? Uh, when you, in your, in, in your feed, in the grid style, all your photos can all appear as squares. But when you click on a post, uh, Instagram now lets you post photos with different aspect ratios, not just the square. Uh, as uh, They're not as good doing photos that are vertical. It will uh, crop those somewhat. So you can't do a super tall vertical photo, but it's better with things that are wider lengthwise. You can uh, zoom out when you're posting and should be able to uh, get all of your photo. And Jeff has posted the two that he knows of in the chat room for people to see. Okay. Okay, we're up to date with questions, Gabriel. Thanks a lot. Okay. So we're getting to the end. This is my most important piece of advice that I can give you, which is have an intent when you are posting. Like know what you are doing. When you know why you're doing it, it's going to be easier to do it. It will, if you have an intent and you have a goal, it will keep you on track to reach that goal. If you say, I want to reach a thousand followers by August or something, take the necessary actions to do that. And whenever you're posting, you know, make sure your caption has an intent. What are you trying to communicate? Why did you choose to share this photo instead of all the other photos? Just know what you're doing. Okay. So that is it for me. If there's any more questions, let me know. And I will go back to my info page too. So you can see. Gabrielle, I have a question for you. I guess. This is Jenny Lodge asking. Mm -hmm. um, so right now I, I have just a personal account, which I have private because it is family pictures and that sort of thing. I guess. Um, and you were saying you can make another account if with a different email address, which I yeah. get. Um, but then as you're making it, is that where you decide that you want it to be like a creator account or a business account? At what point do you make that distinction? Uh, you can, I don't know if it's in the account setup, but you can change it any time in the settings. Okay. So you can choose what account type you want whenever you want. You can change it. Okay. I haven't really looked carefully because I do manage, to, I manage my account for the school where I work mm -hmm. and my personal account. Of course, the school's account is public. Um, and I think... I don't think that I ever said like what kind of an account it was. So um, I kind of inherited it from the person who had it before, I think. I do post to that one from my computer. I use um, an application called Windowed. It's like window with an ED at the end. And it lets me take pictures right from my computer and post them, although it will only let me post squares. But I can do pictures that I've taken with my camera um, for that, and I only use it with my school account, but mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't know I could go in and change what kind of an account that was. I guess. And I do switch back, like you're right, you can easily switch back and forth on your phone between which account. You just have to make sure you're in the right account before you post. <laughs> I guess, definitely. I post a picture of my grandchildren in the school account. Mm -hmm. um, Gabrielle, do you have any more info on the copyright issue uh is there anything specific that you'd yeah, like a little background why i 
suggested that um, we've had um, three speakers from to our club, Joe DiMaggio last week, Les Picker a couple months back, Lance Kemick, who did our judging. All three of those say, told me that they had images stolen mm -hmm. from Instagram and other sources, but specifically Instagram, and uh, used, Joe DiMaggio has some of his, a couple, two of his images used in commercial ads and was basically, when you tried to fight it, they basically said, sue me, you can't do anything about it. And, but they stole their images off of uh, Instagram. There was an artist that I read about, um, his name is Richard uh, Prince. And in 2014 and 2015, what he did was he copied screenshots of Instagram postings from everyday people and he printed them at four feet, uh, four feet by three feet or whatever. And he sold them um, in New York City. And they, he admitted they were not his work. Sometimes he kept the hashtags with the information. Sometimes he didn't. Um, sometimes he added his own hashtags, but they were strict screenshots. And these images um, were selling in a gallery in New York City in 2014 for 90 to $100,000. And they sold in an Italian art fair in New York City for 40 to $90,000. And they almost sold out. Now he's a famous photographer and that's how he got his audience. Um, and apparently people have gone pretty berserk. If you look up Richard Prince or Instagram art steal you'll read about it. Um, and there's another guy I follow who's Sam Abel. He's a retired National Geographic photographer. And one of his most famous images was literally stolen and recropped. They call it re-photography. It now has a new name, re-photography. So they, Abel's image was recropped and then was part of a national ad campaign uh, for cigarettes. Um, and he's been three years now trying to sue the guy who stole the image, uh, and they know who it was, uh, and hasn't gotten anywhere. So I, I've just read more and more about Instagram, uh, warnings. If you really don't want your image taken, you need to think about whether you put it on Instagram, even though it's tiny and not full resolution, it may disappear or it may come up somewhere else. If that doesn't bother you, then that's, that's okay. But be aware that that I personally know four people who, who this has happened to. Mm -hmm. Anything that you post to the internet can be taken and shared. That's just a fact of the internet. This is not something that is exclusive to Instagram. Uh, any social media site too, Facebook, Twitter, whatever, even your own website, people can take your photos and share them. Mm -hmm. But copyright is pretty simple as a photographer as long as you have pressed the shutter button on your photo it is copyrighted and you own that copyright so it makes things a little bit easier but anything on the internet is mm -hmm. liable to be taken and shared that's just a fact of being on the internet it's a bill i just noticed that um brooks photographic society has an account or i shouldn't say that uh, when i looked did the search Hashtag Birch Photographic Society with 29 uh, posts. Do we know how that was created? Yeah, Bill, uh, one of those is my post. Because <laughs> if you hashtag a post, and I think you'll probably see something that was taken at one of our club meetings. It might have been even like the, uh, might have been at the Halloween one, but that would show up under that hashtag. So if we took things at the club, it is a way to share and get the name of the club out. We have a club account that's kind of a little sensitive issue because the person that set it up, set it up incorrectly and we cannot get it. And that person is no longer in the club. Uh, she has left, but 
It has she zero. Set it up under a personal account, and we're having a hard time saying, how do we get the club account away? Mm. But since it's out there as Burke's Photographic Society, you can't even create a new one unless you said society page. Burke's, Burke's Photo or, Society. You could you could create a similar name, yeah. Burke's yeah. Photo Society, and put and use our image like you have because this has it is here. It has zero posts. Yeah, it, it does. Yeah, right. it got set up. Uh, the person did nothing with it mm -hmm. except. Now has it hijacked? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we can't get it, and and I think Lauren has actually contacted, tried to contact Instagram, and we're not having any success. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I would like that back because I think we could use it, and we could be putting things out. I mean, for now, if you're doing something and you're doing something at the club, you can hashtag it so at least people searching on the club, it could pop up, mm -hmm. you know, but. Uh, oh, right now it's only followed by 10 people and it has our old uh, website address in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and that's the problem. I can't get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, so it's in. There, there is a way you can report the user. You click on the three little dots and you can say report the user. Say somebody stole our page. Could you free it? <laughs> I, I do that, Bill. Report the yeah. I, I do see there are 30 things that have the hashtag Burke's photographic, and they look like they might be from events that that Burke's Photographic Society may have. Um, uh, uh, yeah, shows up in bus. It's a, a yeah, I know I hashtagged mine when I did it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the first ones are all Ivan's. Right. Uh, Gabriel, uh, do you use copyright uh, water sim uh, watermarks at all? I personally do not. No. Can you bring up your account or your um, Instagram thing for us to see? Uh, yes, just give me a second. Okay. I do watermarks on mine. The only challenge sometimes with Instagram is because I don't always make mine square. So if somebody clicks on the image, they see the landscape image and the watermarks over on the corner. But I've had a situation in the last couple of weeks that people were screenshotting my stuff, reposting it. And it doesn't have my watermark because I was off the screen. So it's like, oh, shoot. Mm -hmm. So you got to watch some of that. Now, I'm not worried that my stuff will get sold for millions and I'll be out. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not a worry of mine. But it is a frustration when you see your thing show up on somebody else's page. So how did you find that? that and Jeff? they don't acknowledge. Well, it's... Probably, I think I found it because of the hashtag Collery, which was the martial arts. So that's on a lot of my images. And since I follow that hashtag, it's like, oh, there's my image. No, I, that's not my page. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then we go back and forth and, uh, and yeah. Did you report the user? I didn't. What I did was on my story, I copied the photo and said my photo was taken by this person. And then you get a lot of Instagram support from mm -hmm. photographers who are ready to throw them under the bus. But it, it was not 100% mischievous, if you will. The guy just liked the photos, mm -hmm. but I couldn't convince him that I don't mind you doing it. Just put my name with it to say I took it, you know? And uh, cause like Gabrielle said, you sort of have an intent and mine is heavily Indian and heavily yoga and martial arts. So I've gotten more known in that realm there. So 
so even with timing, like I don't post normal times for here because mm. I got to catch an Indian audience. Mm. But when, but now I have a business account. I didn't do the creator. I didn't remember the creator being an option when I did mine, but it probably was. But I did a business and then that does let you see lots of different things. Mm -hmm. All the likes, all the audience, all the, yeah. But anyway. Yeah. Okay, I can share my uh, screen great. again. Yeah. Uh, so this is my account. I have my, my bio up here. I have my name, the types of photography that I do, and I have a link to my website, which you can put. And I have a specific thing that I like to do because uh, it's in a grid of three. I like to do my post in sets of three. So each row is a set of three that are similar. How do you do that? I just, uh, it's just about the order that you post your photos in. And getting that space between the photos, is that, is that part of the program? Uh, that's just uh, the website doing that. Oh, okay. It looks different on a phone than it does on the, when you look at it on Instagram.com on a website. Uh, yeah. The app and the website do look different. So there's an Instagram app for the computer? Uh, no, there isn't. It's an Instagram web page. I mean, you can, yeah. you can go and look at things on Instagram on the computer, but you can't post from that. You can't post from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you look and see here, there's no button for me to post anything. I am logged in, but I cannot post. And you can look at other people's things too, right? Mm -hmm. From there, but you just can't yeah. anything. Yeah. Just a search. So, uh, Gabrielle, um, you said know what your, your goals are, and you gave an example. So, I want to have a thousand people look mm -hmm. at my posts in the next 12 months. So, if that's my goal, how do I? I mean, other than using it on a regular basis, how do you proceed and get a thousand people um, to, to, how do you accomplish that goal? Uh, I'd say knowing when to post, uh, make sure your posting times line up with when people are on their phones too. Mm -hmm. I forgot to mention that. So if you post early in the morning, lunchtime and late at night too. That's something important. Uh, yeah, post every day too. I know being consistent, that's like the worst advice and the most boring thing, mm -hmm. but that's what you have to do. Mm -hmm. And just making sure that the photos that you're posting are eye-catching and that's something that people are going to want to click on. And using the right hashtags. I guess. Yeah. But why do you stack your images like that? This is just a personal preference of mine. I uh, can be very organized. I just like everything to be clean and simple. And I find uh, I post a lot of different types of things. So keeping it like this makes it look a lot less disorganized and scattered. And like I didn't just throw a bunch of photos on a page. So what happens when you so unpack? You what do you have three. underneath it? Hmm? You always post three. Yeah, time that way that keeps it like this because if next time you posted something you only posted one it's gonna it's gonna juggle everything so that your your rows of three aren't like that anymore yeah i don't post all three at the same time i'll usually do three in the same week or so okay. so then it but, gets back to what you want again yeah so when you first post one if like if you post one tonight yeah. everything's gonna get moved. yeah everything yeah. will be out of order okay, but. okay. got it so, Bug, if you if you click the little white box and you unstack them, yeah, I can click a post, and then it will. Uh, it looks different in the app. It will have little dots at the bottom for uh, the number of photos, but you just flip through them. So it's just like it makes them like a little uh, sandwich or something. They can just 
flip through the pages. Right, but now you're looking, now you mm -hmm. need someone to take the time to, to do that and scroll as opposed to just seeing it as they roll down the page, right? Uh, when you're looking in your like home feed, it's different than looking at a single person's page. Your main feed is just one post at a time. So when you're scrolling, you just swipe between photos and app. If you see that little, the little symbol and you see the little dots at the bottom, then people will just swipe through. They take that time? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. If the first photo is eye-catching and they want to see more, it takes like two seconds. Mm -hmm. I, I follow uh, one person, <clears throat> a professional photographer, and he posts every day. And it seems like mm -hmm. once a week, he recycles some photographs. So I thought you couldn't re, you're not supposed to, or they, they prevent you from redoing photographs. Is that not true? I haven't heard of anything like that. If it was excessive, like you were posting the same photo 50 times in a row, maybe that might count as spam or something. But if you post the same photo, like Weekly. two different months or something, uh-huh. Yeah, it, you should be okay. This guy seems to do it like four times in a row, four weeks in a row, he gets repeats. Mm -hmm. hmm. Hmm. Maybe he's putting up the ones that a lot of people liked to try to get more. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a business yeah. thing. It's, a, it's to promote his tours. Mm -hmm. so I guess it's part of his business, I don't know. Someone Does asked about would Watermark stop the stealing? Uh, it depends where the watermark is on the photo. If it can be cropped out, it unfortunately won't prevent it. But as I said earlier, when you're posting stuff on the internet, there's really minimal ways to prevent stealing. Yeah. Unless you put a giant watermark over your entire thing. You could do that, but... Horrible. Yeah. Yeah, and I actually, that the ones that were taken or that somebody reposted... Mm -hmm. What I found was the photo was posted without my watermark, which that's what really made me annoyed. Uh, yeah. And when I looked at it, it's like what the person did was Photoshop it and take it off. Wow. So it was intentional. Uh, again, I, it then went up later with the my logo back on, still not tagged, <laughs> but they all heard about it along with some other folks. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's not, I mean, we're all getting good with Photoshop and those kind of tools. So it's simple to remove a watermark. That's yeah. Mm -hmm. Like Gabrielle said, it, it's basically the photo is yours. So you have that rights to it. It's so Gabriel, it's a you matter of photo finding. that you don't you've decided you don't want to have on there. Uh, yes, there are multiple ways to remove photos from your feed. You can just straight up delete them, but Instagram also has a feature that I personally really like, where you can just archive them, where they will be uh, be moved to a separate page that you can access in your settings where they're just removed from your feed, but you can still view them. You can still see all the likes and the comments and stuff. Oh, yeah. And you can also get an archive of all of your Instagram stories as well. Oh, you didn't even talk about stories. Uh, yeah, I figured I wasn't going to get into that. There's oh, a lot. <laughs> That's the thing. My niece does that, and it, it takes you half an hour to read the story that goes with the one photograph. <laughs> but she has huge numbers of people who follow her because of her stories. Is there a rule of thumb as far as how many photos to put this one guy I follow, follow he always has five to eight photos in his stack, which is a lot mm -hmm. to me, but um, do you have a thought on that? Uh, you can only post up to 10 photos. Uh, I personally have never posted that many because I would rather do multiple posts then if I'm posting 10 photos. Uh, but I would say probably between four and five is what you want to do. Uh, 
getting up to like 10 is a lot for people to swipe through, I will say. So Ivan, I had asked you in the beginning about how the heck did you get so many people to, to follow you? And you said you were gonna wait for the talk. Well, I don't have that many. I mean, but uh, it's, you just put the hashtags that, are, that you feel are appropriate for the photo and people who have similar interests and photography styles to you tend to, to follow you, I think, uh, or they like what you're doing. And, uh, and it's kind of grown in the last few months that I started doing it. But I, is that so what you, I think you had right? someone from Germany or somebody from Europe? Um, yeah. What Absolutely. would you have, what kind of hashtag attracted somebody from Europe? Um, Fuji, Fuji photographer, uh, Fuji X series, or if I do, if I'm using my Fuji camera, um, uh, in, infrared, infrared photography, um, you know, something that's, that's specific to the photo that you're taking. Okay. Nature, mood, you know. Um, yeah, I bet it's the food. Thing. You, you guys are with the Fujis. Um, <laughs> you always go crazy on chats when I'm on doing webinars. Yay, Fuji. <laughs> hey, Gabrielle, click on one of yours and show us how you do your hashtags under there. Okay. Here. So Ooh. you do, we'll scroll back up a little bit. Yep. So you do like a couple lines where you put a yeah. dash. And I've seen people put like, I don't know, a dozen like little dashy lines before they start their hashtags. What's the purpose of that? Uh, just to keep the hashtag separate from your caption because people really do not want to read your hashtags. You should not put information about your photos in the hashtag. The information should be in the caption. Okay. The hashtags are just to get your photos seen. Mm -hmm. So where's your, where's your caption? That's right up here. Hashtag. I just did one sentence. These photos weren't, didn't have much to say about them, but. So you manually type in all those hashtags every time? Uh, well, here. So these three posts here at the top, I would just copy and paste the hashtags from one post to another. But for each like row, pretty much, I will retype my hashtags. But if you put the hashtag in the first two letters, then all those will come up automatically and you just click on it. So you're not actually mm -hmm. typing the whole word. Yeah, if you just put like PHO, uh, you'll see like photographer or photography pop up, stuff like that. You so just that, have to. Oh, that happens with each individual hashtag, right? It auto completes the hash as you start yeah. to type it. It'll, yeah. all, it'll you show still you. have to start out with the 10 different hashtags that she had. Okay. Yeah. But if you, like Gabrielle said, if you have, mm -hmm. like, whenever I want to do an image and it's similar to something I might have used, maybe it's more travel related, maybe it's more. You know, whatever it is, if it's the martial arts stuff, I just go back to a martial arts one. I click edit so I can easily cut and paste yeah. and then throw it in the next one and change a couple things and off yeah. you go. Mm -hmm. Just kind of make life simple for yourself. Because <laughs> okay. after you've done a bunch of them, you sort of have a collection of tags that seem to work. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like, you were able to store them somewhere and just co copy and paste them from. The well, you you end. could put them in like Notepad or whatever. I've done that too. They're stored by, by each photo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but you okay. can what throw. That? <laughs> nope. Say that again. I think Mia said something. Well, like he said, you're copying and pasting. They're stored in each photo that you've already posted. So you just go back and that's where it's stored in other. Here, throw them in a Word doc if you have a bunch of, here's the ones I always use. Because mm -hmm. I always use Nikon, I use D750, I use like the camera names and all that. You all, yeah. I always seem to use those, so throw those mm -hmm. somewhere and then you just add a few of the extra things that pertain to the photo mm -hmm. as that changes. So Gabrielle, why do you do all these photos and spend all this time doing it? I personally just enjoy it. I like to share my work. I like to see other people's work. And I think Instagram is just the best way for me to do that.
I don't have, I'm not really trying to grow too much of a following or anything. I just want people to be able to see my work. Gabrielle, what percentage of your photos do you take with a camera and which, and what percent with your, with, with your, the camera on your phone? A hundred percent of my photos that I post here are taken with a camera, not my okay. phone. So you don't post your phone photos there. Okay. No. I might do a phone photo in my stories or something, mm -hmm. if it was like a behind the scenes shot of something interesting, but I personally don't like what the camera on my phone does enough to post it. So you, um, you as someone mentioned, one way to get the photos from, let's say your laptop after you've processed them over to your phone, what method do you use? I personally just save the whatever my saved JPEG is, and I just save it into photos. I have- Oh, a, you have a Mac. Yeah, and I have a Mac, I'll, so. Your Mac and your iPhone have the photo. They, as soon as it's in photos, then it's in on your phone too. Yeah, all my devices are connected, so That's it's very right. easy. That makes, it, that makes it easy. Jenny, that would be true only if you save everything to the cloud. Right, right, which I don't. Yeah, I don't either. Yeah. So I, I can see where that would, that works really nicely for people who have a Mac and an iPhone and it everything gets saved up to their iPhotos in the cloud and then it's already on your phone right there and you can just do it. That makes, so the, that makes sense. The other way to do it is um, using Lightroom and the Lightroom has a really spectacular cloud sync feature in the last uh, year. Yeah, but then you're filling up, well, I guess you just, oh, so you use, you they know, don't charge you. on your it phone. There's no limit to your Lightroom cloud if it's syncing from your Lightroom library. Ah, so then you go into Lightroom on your phone and then you can just download the one you might want to yes, put on Instagram. It's, um, the Lightroom on the phone, um, you don't need to use for processing. You can use it and share. Uh, it's, it's really phenomenal. Ah. All right, Vince, Vince yeah. what, what plan for Lightroom? Because mine has a limit of so many gigs, I think. No, I don't think. Well, I, it's the nine something a month plan. Well, that's the one I have, but I, I don't think only like I, do it, I don't think these go. I'm ninety nine percent sure that what you sync to the cloud from your Lightroom account it doesn't count as storage. Yeah. That yeah, might be new. I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. I thought it it did anyway or used to i could be wrong but um i don't think so now you smug mug so that's kind of my way of getting it i just have a little this is correct Jeff, because i have um my, my image is stored there and i still have 20 gigabytes of 20 gigabytes available so it does not use uh the cloud storage when it's going into the phone it's just transferring, probably. Um, and the what it gives you in the phone is really pretty amazing stuff. I mean, I have albums and all kinds of things in there. But you're really not on your phone. You're really in the cloud when you're looking at a, on your phone. But you can pick one from there, and then you, just like with Google Photos, you could then say save to phone from, and then from there you could post on your Instagram. Wow. Okay. Huh. So you only have in the, in the update that just came out with Lightroom last week. It's a slight difference. Uh, you have to go to the upper right hand corner of Lightroom, and you'll see it. Uh, the Lightroom, Lightroom on your phone on the on the no on your computer. Oh, okay. I'm not. I don't have that open right now. Oh, yes. I yeah, do. they made they made a slight change, but you uh, mm -hmm. even if you're not going to process on your phone, it's an amazing. Um, amazing thing. Wow. Well, if there's a tip there, throw it in the newsletter this week. Because I didn't think that allowed just anything. I have to look now. Now you have me curious. Yeah. That would be nice, but I thought that was the expensive plan. No, it's not. And um, um, you have to have that, you have to have the sync feature turned on uh, on your Lightroom, and then it could be automatic sync, or you can tell it to sync. Um, 
So it's, um, and you could decide what you want to put there. It's really, really pretty amazing. Maybe I'll write something up, uh, not this newsletter, but um, yeah. in the near future. Huh. Uh, Pat says that if you have Google, there's unlimited storage um, free for high definition, uh, uh, high resolution, and then connect your phone to that account and you'll have access through Google. Hmm. That's true now. It's not true if you put up the full resolution. It's, it's a high resolution, but if you try to put up the full size photos, it will fill up your Google Photos account because it happened to somebody I know. She but, says high def resolution. I don't right. know exactly sure what that means. Yeah, you pick between the full size or high, and really for what you're going to do on Instagram, the, the other, the um, whatever they call it, high def or whatever, um, th that works fine for Instagram. Okay. Gabrielle, do you resize? Uh, what so what post processing do you use? You're mute, you're muted though. Sorry. I use uh, Lightroom to edit my photos, and I just save them as uh, the full size JPEG site setting that okay. Lightroom has. That's what I do. I don't do any special resizing or anything. Okay. So when you export them out of Lightroom, it's that they're full the full size as a JPEG. I guess. And do you, when you do them in Lightroom, um, I, like I said, I know you, you don't post everything as a square, but do you often choose to like go into your cropping tool and say crop as a one, one by one and just see if you want to export it as a square because you're going to use it on Instagram or don't you? I personally don't do that because I will, I think it's a waste to crop the same photo and have it crop two different ways. When I'm just going to want to share it the one way. Mm -hmm. I personally don't think many of my photos would look better as squares. And Instagram does let you post different sized images now. So So you don't usually crop as a square then, unless it looks unless it's a photo that really looks like it would make a good square. I always when I'm editing, however I crop it there, when I'm editing is how I post it on Instagram. Okay. I think it was Joe DiMaggio who's, no, was it Joe DiMaggio? Was it, no, it was the guy before that who was cropping stuff. The guy oh, who did our. Oh, that was Lance. Lance. Yeah, he, he said, well, if you're almost there, just go square. Yeah, he <laughs> he heard say that? Like, he, was, yeah. he was, he was resizing something. He was showing us how he cropped. He was like, ah, you're, if you're almost there, just go square. I thought that was a great line. Yeah. Well, I know that Instagram, uh, I don't use it a lot, but 1080 by 1080 for the squares and 1080 by 568 for the verticals mm -hmm. works. Okay, good to know. Yeah, I haven't, I don't do a lot of resizing to squares exactly. Now, what I'll do, what I'll do if I do a portrait is I'll go into one of those apps that I typed in and I'll do a square so that the black lines are on either side mm. of the portrait mm -hmm. so it doesn't cut off. And then usually on a feed, I'll try to keep portraits sort of either together, or I'll do the portrait so it's in the middle and then two common things are on the outside or the other way. Mm -hmm. But but the only time I've done squares is like I have a friend that I gave him a lot of his photos. I made him Instagram versions that my logo would stay on it. Because <laughs> I know when other people post and sometimes if you give your photos to somebody else and allow them to post them, they do the ugliest things to them sometimes. It's like they don't do the portrait and then they let Instagram crop it. And then it's like, why did you do that? Because now the photo doesn't look good. Right. So that's the only time I'll I'll square them is if I think somebody else is going to use them on their their feed, and I'm okay with that. But uh, yeah, cool. it's fun. One other thing that I found um, there's there's a there's a software program that's on sale right now, which is an absolute bargain, and it's it's called Affinity Photo. It's a lot like uh, Photoshop, but it's twenty four ninety five on sale, 
or 24.99, something like that. But it's, it's called Affinity Photo. It's well worth looking at if, if you don't have a good uh, photo, uh, a good software program. Hmm. And it's really nice, easy to use. And there's lots of videos, YouTube videos you can watch on, on how to use it. Very sophisticated and for the price, it's, it's fabulous. Huh. Affinity Photo. Well, it lets you do layers. It's fabulous. Mm -hmm. And uh, I do a lot of infrared photography and it's, it's, there's a wonderful workflow for infrared as well that, that works really well. Hmm. All right. Anybody else? Uh, that was great. Thank you. That was great, Deb. Yeah, so everybody follow each other. If you're on Instagram, start following each other. <laughs> yeah. That's thank you, good. Gabriel. Yeah, thanks very much, Gabriel. Thank and you for having me. Gabriel, what school did you say you were going to? Uh, Drexel University. Oh. Happening at yeah. Drexel, Gabriel. Are they have planning on having normal, normal school next in the fall? Uh, somewhat. They're doing. Uh, they're going to have everybody on campus campus but they might do some classes online mm -hmm. and some in person it depends on the class and, and where are you doing photography there at drexel yes i am yeah. wow i didn't know they did that one mm -hmm. they have a great photography program wow very cool good luck and wonderful yeah you'll, you'll all have to come down and see her work or at least see it virtually if they do like a virtual showcase <laughs> Of, her, of the students' work. Oh, Drexel Photography has an Instagram account of the of the seniors' work for this year, and you can follow that. It's fabulous. It's really impressive what they what they accomplished given the fact that they were all sent home, you know, in the middle of the semester to do their final projects. So they kind of made the best of it. Neat. Gabriel, yeah, are they doing any film work there, like real film? Uh, yes, they start off the first year. You start off doing film. You don't start off doing digital. That's mm -hmm. the first thing that they have you do. So great. Mm -hmm. You have a dark room? Do you, do you use a dark room? Uh, yes, they have a dark room. They have all the enlargers, all the chemicals, all the stuff. They even do some historic process stuff in the later years, like cyanotypes and um, platinum printing, stuff like that, too. Oh. Can I sign up? <laughs> <laughs> Only if you pay her bill. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, well, it's, you know, uh, in touch with us, and if you have some postings, let us know, and we'll met, let the members know in the um, newsletter. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and congratulations on your graduation. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> So is your mom going to come to our meetings and while you're away? <laughs> no? I'm, t I'm terrible at Instagram. I walk over and I'm like, hey, can I post this? And she's like, no. <laughs> not that one. Not that one. This one. I'm like, okay. All right, folks. See you next Monday um, with Frank. Okay. Sounds, great. Sounds good. Right. Thank you much. Thank you. We'll see you. See you. Don't forget to get the information off the chat room if you want it. Ah, sounds good. <laughs>